So let's look at the extremes in our scenarios here. We can make a little table. So we can say, what is x, what would the time be, and what is the first derivative of that time? So our extremes, again, were as if x was 0. That means that we're actually right at point p, x being 0. So that would be like our scenario we said to walk from h to p and then take the subway from p into campus. The other scenario is our value that we found here, 0.3536. And that represents walking from h to q and then from taking the subway from q into the campus. And our last scenario was if x was 10, meaning that it would be right up here at uh, this distance would be 10, which means we're right at the campus, so we're walking hc that distance. So if x was 0, so we could plug that into our time function here, we would get uh, 0 squared plus 1 is 1, square root of 1 is 1, times 1 fifth is 1 fifth, plus 10 over 15, minus that would be 0, so it would be 1 fifth plus 10 over 15 which would be 3 fifteenths plus 10 fifteenths, or 13 over 15, which if we put it into decimal form is 0.867. And I don't know if you remember that from earlier, that's that uh, time if we walked h to p and then from p to c that we calculated earlier. And if we figure out for x to be 10, we put 10 in our total time formula, 10 here, so that would be 10 fifteenths minus uh, 1, 10 fifteenths, which goes, that would go to 0, and then we get here 10 squared is 100 plus 1, so that's the square root of 101 divided by 5, which if you remember was as if we walked directly there. That would be our distance here divided by our speed, and if you remember that was 2.01 hours. Now if we plug in 0.3536 into our time function here, if you work it all out, it does end up, I won't do it here, but it ends up to be about 0 0.855. 0.855 hours. Which, as you can see, is a smaller amount of time than either of the other two scenarios. But let's also use the first derivative here to figure out if that is a minimum. So if I plug x to be 0 into the first derivative here, 0 divided by that would be 0, leaving me with negative 1 15th. So we know that the first derivative is a negative, meaning it is going down. In other words, it's uh, decreasing. Now if we put in 10 into our uh, first derivative, this will be 10 over 5 times the uh, square root of 1 plus uh, 10 squared, or and this minus 1 15th is actually a positive throughout. So we can put that in as positive so that the graph is increasing there. And we know that if we put in point uh, 3536 into the first derivative, it's going to give us 0. So the graph is level at that stage, so that is indeed a minimum. The graph looks like this, and that point is a minimum. So if we also wanted to confirm with a graph, we can look at the graph of this function. A little snapshot here, and the slope of the tangent line here gives us um, a minimum where the value for uh, the x value is 0.3536 as the distance with the time minimum time of 0.8552. So this is a graph of our total time versus our distance x, where t is given by this function. The time it takes us to walk plus the time it takes us to ride the subway. Okay, I think we've got it. Let's go back and make sure we answered the questions. So let's go all the way back to the beginning here. So we're asked to find the shortest commute time given these constraints. Well, that shortest commute time is 0.855 hours. And that works out to be about 51 minutes and 18 seconds. Whew, and there you go.